welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. One stitch, two stitches. Man is that another dog hair? <laughs> Without further ado let's begin today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crown as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Rectangle Granny Crochet Blanket. Jeannie refers to this particular concept as the Modern Granny. So if I say Modern Granny this is exactly the type of stitch work that it is. If you got Bernat Blanket hanging around and you would like to get rid of it this is a great project in order to speed your way through making a beautiful blanket. So I really do like the gray and the um, white tones together. It's one of my favorites when it comes to crochet. It gets very neutral. It pretty much goes with a lot of things and I love that. Today I'm going to be using some spare uh, Bernat Blanket Blanket yarn that I have kicking around and I'm just gonna demonstrate how to get this thing started because once you understand it it becomes really quite easy. So it's a recommending three colors. It's the vintage white, the pale gray and the dark gray and the information is available right here if you're looking for it. Page number two has a crochet diagram. You know it's my favorite and the crochet diagram is going to be how we're gonna get ourselves started and then once you begin to understand this pattern it's just repeating it rounds number three and four and you will end on a third round so that you have a nice solid end You'll need a 8 millimeter size L crochet hook today and let's demonstrate on how this is done and once you see how this is done you may actually get hooked on this particular stitch concept. Let's begin. So the color I'm using today I think may be discontinued but it's called Cloudy Twist Sky and it was available at Joanne and we used it for a stitch long. So I just have a partial ball here that I can demonstrate with. So we're going to start by creating a slip knot to begin. And I need you to chain a certain number. So let me just flip the instructions here real quick. And it is chaining of 33. So let's do that. So let's do 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and go all the way to 33. Maybe back here in just a moment. So once your chain is done we are going to then circle around the chain. So we're going to go fifth chain from the hook and you'll put in three double crochets. You'll chain one and you'll skip three chain. In the next chain you'll put three double crochets, chain one, skip three and you're gonna do that. So do you see the number of times that it has to be done? You can see that you'll have a corner here the edge and so you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So there will be six standalone shell concepts as far as three double crochets into the same stitch. So once you understand that it becomes a lot easier to count just to get yourself started. And then once we're all the way here we're gonna circle around the chain and just crochet the underside of the chain and this will complete then the very middle of your blanket. This particular concept is called from the middle and it's a concept where a granny square can be built out to infinity and that's called from the middle. Let's begin round, uh, row number one or round number one sorry. <laughs> so I got you zoomed in nice and close. So I want you to go fifth chain from the hook. So you're gonna count it back. So you're gonna count one, two, three, four and the fifth one and turn it over and get the back hump of the chain. It'll look nicer. And when you do that just hold it so that you can see it and you're going to put in three double crochets into that same stitch. So this is one, two and three. So this here is not only uh, the corner here but it's also partial of the edge on the one side. Just remember that. So now you're gonna chain one after that's done and you're gonna skip three back on the chain. So you're gonna skip one, two and three and I have this turned over so I can see the back hump of the chain and that's how I do it. So if you prefer not to use the back hump that's completely up to you. So in the fourth chain away you're going to apply three more double crochet into the same chain. And so that's one of the six that you're going to do that will be in between the edging. So once you have that done chain one and then skip the next three. So one, two, three and go to the fourth. With this style of yarn sometimes you can cheat the system and, and if you think you got it then great and you can fudge it really easily with this really extra fluffy yarn. Bernat Blanket of course. So you're gonna do that. So what I want you to do, you don't need to see me go all the way across this thing but just keep that same configuration. So chain one, skip the next three, one, two, three, go to the fourth 
and put in three double crochet and I'm gonna pick you up once the six that are in the middle here the standalones are done and then I'll show you how to circle around the other uh, edge and I'll do that in a few moments from now. So I'm working my way across and I can see that I have six standalones on their own. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the very first one so don't count that as part of the six. So I have my three double crochets in. It's a chain one. So in the very last chain I need you to apply three double crochets first. So we're gonna say one, two, and three. Then you're going to only chain one. So the corners when there's double crochet will be nice and tight. So in the same chain I need you to apply three more double crochet. So this will be the one edge. So one, two, and three. And then to turn the corner again you're gonna chain one. Sorry I'm dropping stitches today. So I'll chain one. And then in the same one again, the same chain, three more double crochets. You'll notice that the starting strand is there. Just go right up over top of it to bury it underneath. So we have one, two, and three. Now you're going to chain one to start the next grouping of double crochets. And remember there's, there will be three. And so you'll chain one. And all you gotta do is see these ones here. It's now upside down because you've turned around. So just go into the base of the ones that you see. So just put in three double crochets into the base of that one. So one, two, and three. And then chain one and then jump to the next base. And I want you to do this all the way to the other side and I'll pick you up at the end of the rotation of this one as we complete the other side. So just putting in three double crochets into the base of the existing ones with a chain one that separates it and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way across. I'm just filling in the bases that you see. There should be six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. After the last grouping of three just chain one. So then this is where you'll end up on the edge. So let me bring you back a little closer. So on the edge here the same base you're going to put in three double crochet to start. So one, two, and three. And then chain one to turn and then in the same base you're only gonna apply two double crochet because this it's chains here is part of that. So you'll only apply two double crochet. And if you recall we went fifth chain from the hook when we started. So that means that there's four empty chains and so you're only gonna connect to the third one up. So one, two, and three. And you can probably count it a lot easier in your own hands. So just go to the third one up that you believe is the third and just slip stitch it. And so the edge should have three double crochets this side, this side and also with that chain that you have plus the two there's your three. So when you finish around you literally have to end the yarn. So this will be something that you have to do. If you decide that you don't want to do that and you just wanna keep going with the same color all you just gotta do is just start with the next round and just a chain one and single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the same corner and continue the, the color along. But if you do want the color breakdown just finish it off completely. So to finish it off I just pulled it through and you'll need a tapestry needle for the best results especially with Bernat Blanket with the thicker um, eye of the needle. And I turn it over to the back side and you're just gonna drag it through the stitch work of the same color. So don't if you have once you start introducing colors don't uh, drag it through any other color but the same one because then it will be hidden. So that it's dragging it through first time. A slightly different path the second and finally a third time. This yarn gets stuck within itself so it should never follow it on you. It's never a guarantee um, but yeah. So anyway I just accidentally pulled it back out. So just make sure that you think it's in good enough and if you're too lazy with it or you're just not enough it will pop out and you may upset yourself so don't be cheap <laughs> uh, with the concept of making sure that it's in. So turn it back over to the side that you were working on and we're going to begin 
with round number two. So in round number two every other round is what I'm about to show you. It's the same color every time as well. So that's what's stable. In the pattern you'll notice that there's a uh, two rows of this color. So this will appear again next time and then uh, then it will set switch to two rows of another color in the in the double crochet element. So that's something that you can keep an eye on. So how I'd like to do it to start a new one especially with Bernat Blanket is create a slip knot and go right into the corner space. And I'm gonna show you a technique that is not written. So just go right into the space. This is called the standing double crochet. It looks better. But the other way that they have it written is technically right as well. So in order to do that just scoop the yarn and pull it. And noticing that I did not pull through the first loop and then yarning over pulling it through. That's a standing single crochet. So if you don't wanna do that just join it chain one and then do a single crochet in but you'll notice that it doesn't look as as perfect. I'm saying that nicely. So what I would like you to do then is chain three. So one, two, three and in the same corner space another single crochet and go right up over top of this straggler. Catch it underneath so that you don't have to sew as much. You still may wanna throw that through a tapestry needle just so you know. So now I need you to chain three. So one, two and three and then jump to this space between the double crochets and single crochet. So we, there. So chain three. So one, two, three and then come into the space. So you're going to notice in this particular round and every time that you do it there's no extra stitches that are required for a corner. It's always just chain three and then single crochet into the next space. So the only thing with the corners is that you have to make sure that there's two single crochets in. So it was a single crochet chain three to another single crochet into the corner. So just keep that in mind. Okay so you're gonna continue around and I will just keep on moving. So here comes the corner next. So chain three to get to the corner. And just use your fingers and apply the stitches. Pull them apart if you have to. So single into the corner first. Chain three. And then single again into the same corner. So the corners will look like that. Now chain three. And the next corner just happens to be here. So this will get bigger and bigger as you rotate around. So single crochet in. Chain three. Single in. And then continue that same idea down the other side. So chain three and start going into your spaces. So please do this all the way around. I'll see you at the next side there and then we'll switch off our colors once again. So as we come around we're gonna come right into the corner. So single crochet, chain three and single crochet in the same corner. And then we're gonna do their final finish here. So you'll chain three. So one, two, three and then slip stitch it to the first standing single crochet if you did it that way or to the first single crochet. And now you're gonna wanna get rid of this yarn now. If you feel like dragging it up on the back side um, there are tutorials like that but people tend to complain about it because it's so obvious. So you may wanna just finish it off, throw it through the tapestry needle and just drag it back through the work. Let me just demonstrate that quickly because it's only one time that I'll show you. So just throwing it back on the tapestry needle. Again turn it to the back side and I always turn it to the back side because um, you can have imperfection there and I'm just dragging, uh, dragging it through the chain work. So this chain work in the future will then be covered by double crochets. So it's really quite forgiving. So you drag it through once and a slightly different path the next time. And then finally a slightly different path again. Third time is a charm. And then once that's done you can just trim it safely down to the work. Now the starting strand that you have you would wanna do that as well. I don't think it's in far enough for it not to follow it on you. So just dragging that one also in back and forth and then just meet me back here in a moment and we'll continue with the next round. So let's begin round number three. So three and four is the repeat pattern and you'll wanna end on a round three. So you'll want to start off with the slip knot on and you wanna come into a corner space. 
So you're just gonna come right into the corner space and you're gonna attach it. Pull things nice and tight and chain four. So one, two, three and four. So the th three of those is a double crochet and then the, the fourth one is the space. So in the same space I want you to apply three more double crochet. So one, two and three. Okay, and get rid of that, put that behind. And now immediately jump. So you're not putting any spaces in between the groups in, uh, the grouping of three double crochets. So in the next space, just put three double crochet. So one, two, and three. And then keep on moving. So when you use this in the future, see how they're in groups of three? You're just gonna put the single crochets in between that group. So it's technically not a chain one at all. It's just forcing it into the space which makes it better. So there's three double crochets in that space and so on. So I'll see you at the first corner and I'll show you how to turn and then we'll continue our journey. So coming up to my first corner, you can see it right here. And so you're just gonna immediately put in three double crochet. Noticing that I did not chain one before I started the corner. There's no chain ones at all in this round. It's only done in the very first one we start. So once you get that done, you're only gonna chain one to turn and then three more double crochets into the same corner. And so you get a nice shape, a sharp, um, <laughs> a nice sharp 90 degree turn. So now there's gonna be more spaces before you get to the next corner. So fill in the spaces. In this case it's just three double crochet. So each space is three double crochet. And the corner happens to be next. And so you'll do the same thing as you just did. So you just three single, uh, three double crochet, chain one and three double crochet. And then continue down the opposite side. So we're going all the way around. So do you see how this color becomes accenting? It's awesome. So each uh, chain three space is going to have three double crochet and please do this and I'll see you at the next edge as we continue our journey. So I'm coming to the next corner here and it's what you already know. So three double crochet first and just chain one to have a sharp turn and three double crochet in the same. So what we're watching for is the beginning when we started. So you have a space here that you'll wanna fill in because you're not at the next corner yet. So three double crochet is there. Now when you started here, you did that chaining of four. So one of the double crochets is already in. So you're gonna finish it with just two double crochet only and then slip stitch it to the third chain up from it. Just guess it if you don't know. If you can't see it, it's pretty forgiving. And so you'll slip stitch it, you'll fasten this yarn off and so the two colors that it has in the blanket, so this is one I'm oh sorry, this is one time and one time. So the next two layers of double crochets will be a different color if you're following the pattern exactly as is. So let's just review then round number four which is slightly different from round number two. So let's begin round number four. So three and four is gonna be repeated over and over and over and you'll finish on a third round which will be a double crochet round to give you a solid border. So starting off in the corner, just do that um, standing single crochet like I showed you before. Pull things nice and tight, chain three and single crochet into the same one. And there's your first corner. Now you're gonna chain three, so one, two, three. So what's different about round number two is that there was a chain one space that we saw. Here we're looking for the groups of three and slam in a stitch in between the group, grouping of three. This keeps it nice and tight. So chain three, so one, two, three and look for the next grouping of three. So you can see the single crochets underneath, they line up perfectly. So one, two, three and going into the spaces in between. So one, two, three and so you can see that you would blaze along in this uh, particular project really quite quickly. So you'll notice in the pattern is that the very final um, round you'll notice that there's groups of twos. You can see that so two 
and the very last one there's just one color on its own just kind of final like a finalized uh, perimeter. So you can keep that in mind if you would like to do that too. I remember that these patterns are kind of like um, recipes. So change what you don't like you know add what you prefer. So as you come to the next corner you can see it. It's a chain one here. So single crochet, chain three and single crochet to turn that corner and then continue along. So the edging is gonna get on this side is gonna get bigger. So the blanket um, should measure approximately about 65 inches in the one direction. So keep an eye on that if you wish. You can stop at any point and make it customized for you. And uh, the yarn that has been suggested matches that size. So it's the next corner. So chain three and coming in. And so you're just gonna zip your way all the way around and I'll see you at the end of the round and make sure that you do the next corner. I, I will already be past that by the time you come back in a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around I've just turned my corner and I'm continuing with the spaces. And so it's just a matter of just the final space being filled in. So this is the final space here, chain three and then you're going to just slip stitch it to the beginning um, standing single crochet or the single crochet depending on how you executed that and that will conclude that. You'll get rid of that color and carry on. So technically the next time that you're starting you'll start off with a different color than what you have here if you wanna match the pattern as written. So you'll do two uh, rounds of that particular color before returning back here um, to the regular color and if you just wanna keep it within a two color idea you can. You can make an entire blanket just with the same color if you want to. Um, it's completely up to you. Colors are very subjective and this would be how you would do this particular concept. So repeats three and four uh, until you're satisfied ending on a round number three so you have a solid border and let me just back you out here and it's a really neat concept and you can see how much I just did in this short time frame and you can see that it would be a quite a quick blanket. Until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.